Olá, querido irmão, querida irmã. Hello, dear brother and dear sister. Now we are beginning one more tutorial of the daily food. Daily food that we are studying, it is the sent one of God. We are studying week three. And let us speak about the title, which is The Bread which came down from heaven gives life to man. Praise the Lord. This title alone, it is very rich, right? So let us begin by reading, as usual, the first paragraph, which gives us an explanation on an overview on the whole week. The title of this message is The Bread That Came Down From Heaven Gives Life to the World. In it we see that we need the Word that came down from God's mouth to live. And this Word, which is God Christ Himself, does the work of God. We, just as the mighty men of David, cooperate with the Lord, presenting ourselves to build up the tabernacle and to enter the good land. This first part alone explains why what was coming for the week and it ends speaking about this mighty man. 2020, praise the Lord, we received the revelation which is in Psalms 110 and verse 3. And we saw this great army that has been raised of teens, this holy young ones who are being presented, presented themselves and they are changing all of our church life, changing our meetings, our living, our weekends, and our conferences. And this is a great blessing. The Lord is turbocharging all of our tools. Praise the Lord for the revelation of this Holy Young Ones. Together with this revelation of the Holy Young Ones, who will care for them? Who will care for those teens? And in fellowship with Brother Pedro, some of those captains, these mature young ones, who presented themselves, they asked Brother Pedro, now tell us really, what do you want? What do you desire from us? What do you are expecting from us? Holy Young Ones to take the lead in this army. And the Brother Peter gave us this, um, reminded us of this passage of David who desired to drink the water that was by the well to the gate of Bethlehem. And David only uh, sighed, he not asked them to go there because really there was a place that was the, the enemies were there, the Philistines, but three of these mighty men broke out and brought the water. So this demonstrates that the attitude of doing the will of the Lord, the attitude of obeying the Lord, and this attitude that the young ones today must have and understand that they are making miracles to happen in the church life in our day-to-day -day also. Also, and this week spoke about Chronicles 12, that they not only to present themselves, but also to serve, to serve with their skills, to serve with their talents. They have many talents. They can be very useful in the church life. This is causing a change in our church life. This week also we saw an example of Iran, who had his skills to build up the temple, to fight, and also to build up the temple. So the captains and the young ones today, they can use those skills that we... Uh, we acquired with the secular world and to use in the church life. It's very good to know that the young ones today are being brought and been very useful to build up the work of the Lord. And on Wednesday, he begins speaking about to build up the tabernacle and to enter the good land. We should not only work to build up, but also with a focus on on entering the good land. That was the goal of the people of Israel in the wilderness. The real goal was what? To build up the tabernacle and to fight to enter the good land. Today, we in the church life also have the same goal of building up the church so that we are all overcomers and enter the good land. We know that only the overcomers will enter the good land. Only the overcomers will inherit the kingdom saw that the old generation, those with their old habits, and especially, they did not enter the good land. 
those who were unbelieving, those who were not obedient, because of their unbelief, because of their disobedience. We already know with history that would not enter the kingdom. So we need to be like these young ones, to be simple and obedient, to be simple, to hear and practice the word, to hear and practice each word that we're hearing in the weekends, we inculcate them, we must learn to inculcate the word. This word must dwell in our heart richly, to dwell in our minds. This is a characteristic that we see today in the house of teens. The house of teens in our cities, we saw that the holy young ones at all times, they're inculcating the word at all times, practicing this word. Once again, he speaks about Iran to use our skills in the church. And today we learn many things in the secular world. We learned each one in their own job that can be very useful in the church life. Very useful also in the tools that we have today, which is GPC, be useful in, G in PAC, in the House of Teens, it can be useful in any church service. Since there is a position, there's a work for each one of us. Let us use what we have as a skill, what we have as a uh, good, even in the world that we are using the world for our secular world, let us use also for the church life. Another example that spoken this week about Nehemiah, that he not only built up, not only was concerned about the will of God and to build up the walls, but he was also fighting with one hand, he was building up and with the other he fought. This is an example to us too. We are not here unaware. There's an enemy which wants to destroy and to end this work that we're building. So we must be always attentive. This example that with one hand building with another, this fight is a good example for us to be attentive. Today we know that the enemy wants to steal, kill, and destroy. This is the work of the enemy. That's why he's here for. It's very easy to destroy or right? to build up. It takes time, it takes labor. That is why we need to be like the name Maya, who are attentive also to the text of the enemy. Do not let, do not stop being watchful and fighting. Let us continue being those who build up and who fulfill the will of God, which is to build up the work and his kingdom. On Thursday, he enters in the message speaking about John 6.19 showing Jesus walking on the waters. Jesus walking on the waters, in the waters we know that they mean the world. So the Lord Jesus shows that he is above, that he overcomes the world. Ephesians 6.12, we also see that there is a spiritual warfare. There's a spiritual warfare in the year. Let us read Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the, dark, of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So Jesus walked on the water. He rules the world. But we know that on the backstage, in the air, there is the enemy, the, the, there is the, the spiritual host of wickedness. In John 6.18, we see a boat, we see the, the, the sea, there was a great wind blowing. So we have the text of the enemy uh, just trying to disturb, but this boat in the water, this boat in the sea, the water cannot get in the boat. This water doesn't get in. If this water gets in, it causes a lot of damage to the church. Even if the wind, or that we go through difficult times with the wind, with the storm, this boat needs to continue, needs to get to its destination. We go through difficulties in each church. 
we have our fights, we have our difficulties, but we know who's in the boat. The Lord is in the boat. The Lord is with us in the boat. He's with us and He says, I'm here with you. There's nothing to fear. So even the more that we have uh, lots of wind and storm, know that the Lord is with us in the boat. This boat is the church. He is with us. Praise the Lord. Another example on the storms is Matthew 14, 28. We see that Peter walked on the waters. When he went walking, he saw the circumstances. He saw the wind. He saw the circumstances. He was afraid and he sank. From the moment that we stop looking at Jesus and we look at the circumstances, we tend also to sink. May we learn not to look at the circumstances, not to look at the, the difficulties, and to look away into Jesus, only hearing His Word, and to believe in His Word. Speaking of believing, in Mark we see an important report that the disciples did not understand the miracles of the Lord. Some miracles happened, the, the multiplication of bread. So he did one more miracle, which was to walk on the sea, showing that the hearts of disciples were still hardened. And they, they lacked faith still. That's why the lack of faith disturbs the work of the Lord. When we believe we walk on the problems. When we believe we know that the Lord is our God, our King, ahead of us. All of that occurs because we are still natural. We live by the natural man, by our own interests. The multitude was concerned about what? Concerned about prosperity, concerned about healing, concerned about their food. And today, among Christians, there is still this appeal for prosperity, this appeal for healing, for prosperity, but we must seek the Lord for His will. In Matthew 6, 33, tell us to seek the kingdom, and then everything will be added. The disciples were seeking the Lord with a second intention. They had second intention, right, a second will of being there, not genuinely, so they were seeking for food, they were seeking for healing, and may we not be those who seek the Lord out of material things, but because of His will. Our goal, our pursuit for the Lord must be, Lord, your will be done, let us seek the kingdom first, the rest you will care for us. Like to read John chapter 6, verse 27. Here we read, Do not labor for the food which, per which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Praise the Lord. The Lord cares for us. But let us work for the food which endures to everlasting life. Now we know that it, it is in the word that it is in doing the will of God. And we know that our true enemy is inside of us. We are still that body, this fallen body. We know that man is created with three parts, body, soul, and spirit. The spirit was made to contact God, to be connected with God. We have a verse, God is spirit and his worshippers must worship him in spirit and truth. He also created the soul. The soul is our personality, the soul is our preferences, even uh, twins who are born together, they have different preferences, different, they are completely different people. That is why the Lord must govern over our soul. The Lord must govern over our soul, our mind. Why? Because we are fallen people. 
and on our bodies on Saturday. He says that we need the air, we need water, we need food, and since always we'll wake up in the morning thinking, what am I going to eat for breakfast, what am I going to eat or have dinner? We are worried about our livelihood. But our eyes must be in the things of God. The Lord shows us in Matthew 4.4 4, that man shall not live on bread alone, but uh, by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Our real food, it is to believe this word. The teens are doing that. They are practicing transcription of the messages. It, 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 even if it's not a whole message, but you take a part of the message and transcribe it, that will be recorded in your mind. It will change your day, immersion in the Word. Take the Word and immerse in it. Enter in prayer. Take small nuggets of the immersion and to sleep and wake up with God. What do we do before sleeping and before waking up? What is the first thing we do? So may we feed, to feed on the Word. This is to eat of the Word. And the Word, it is Christ Himself. Many say, no, but we need to read the Scriptures, we need to go to the Scriptures, we need to read, we need to read the Scriptures, to use the Scriptures well. But the Scripture, letter by letter, without Christ, it is a dead letter. We know that in John 6.40 And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have an everlasting life, will raise him up at the last day. He who believes in the Word, they have eternal life. And we know that our Eternal life is not on this earth. Let us live eternally here, eternally, forever. This eternal life is to be in the sphere of God. When we're seeking eternal life, we are seeking the sphere of God. And once again, on Sunday, he tell, says that the, the, the crowd was not understanding that the Lord was the sent one. Despite many signs, their concern was still with material things. Saints, let us seek what is eternal. Let us seek the Word. The Word leads us to what is eternal. The Word is Christ. Is there something, something than, something much better than seeking material things, which is the bread that came, the true bread, that feeds us, the true bread that satisfies us true bread that comes down from heaven. This bread comes down from the heavenly sphere to earth, directly from the Father, the Father of lights, this Father that's unchanging. It shows quite well in the message. This life, light is unchanging. There's no variation. Our Father, the Father that is constant, His constant. So let us allow, stop saints, to be always asking for physical bread, and let us seek the, the, the spiritual bread, the bread that is eternal. When we eat of this bread, we enter in the spiritual sphere, the heavenly sphere. There's nothing better. So let us enter in and feed on this word. This word is Christ, and can give us true food, which is the word. Amen.